Can you reconstruct virtual environments with just images? Let's find out! So to explain what I mean by that, Meshroom is a tool that lets you take images of an object and convert that into 3D mesh. It isn't good at reflections, movements, fuzz, or lack of lots of tracking points. This is a good example set of input images. If you can remove enough of what interferes, you can get some stunning results. Now that my partner has a new hobby of bringing random 3D objects into a computer, we thought, what about 3D games? First off, Zelda Ocarina of Time. We started by trying to get the Master Sword. I think the emulator is messing with the position here. I don't recall this glitch. Anyway, the next step was to take screenshots. The simplest way was to screenshot the whole screen and just cut out what was needed. And that is what we ended up doing. This script takes a picture, cuts out what we need, and removes the original screenshot. At first, the script was built so that you could press enter to capture an image, but that turned out to be rather slow and useless. What proved to be more helpful was letting it loop by deleting duplicates and bad images later. After meshing, not a chance. All the virtual cameras ended up in just about the same place. I think this could mean that the room has too many repeating patterns. There's seemingly not enough unique detail to map the room right. Next, we tested the town square as an adult. To remove all movement from the scene, all the creepy zombies were killed. This did a lot better mapping the camera positions, but clearly it did not work. Next was testing a newer game with better graphics. Wind Waker seemed like a good option and was easy to emulate and manipulate. To remove the player, we edited the small Link cheat to an absurd level. With Link no longer visible, cutouts of screenshots could be a lot bigger. After a few tries flying around the island, only certain parts would show up. The backside of the island failed to work and only one house worked at all. In this attempt, the ship worked a bit better. Then we decided to take a stab at ripping stuff out of a video. To kick things off, Deep Space Nine has a lot of shots of the space station in just the intro. Many low movement screenshots were able to be cut and put through Meshroom. With a bit of editing, this is almost usable. NASA recently released footage of its probe landing on Mars. With a bit of scripting, we can dump that right into Meshroom. First off, it is cool to see the descent and camera angles created by the landing. Second, this worked well. You can just about get a feel for what the Martian landscape might have looked like. Piping in images of the night sky lets you build a sphere of stars. We'd love to see what flat earthers have to say about why this ended up a sphere. Now that there's a testing beta version of the camera app on this Librem 5, meshrooming on the go might be doable. With just a few dozen photos, Meshroom did a good job putting together a passable fire hydrant. Live objects tend to move a lot. To help counteract the movement, recording video and ripping out images from that is faster than taking individual photos. The downside is a lot of images end up with motion blur or focus issues, but with a lot of pruning the results can be pretty good. The best results we've managed come when using a complex background to help orient the camera. You also want objects without a lot of reflections, shine, or movement. Yarn is about the best use case, and it gives hackers game an opportunity to animate for Finn's Wonderland. This is a small Etsy startup creating unique knitted creatures. Pick up your cutie one-of-a-kind knitted creature at finnswonderland.com.